Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, thank you for joining us. I am going to be showing you all my Hoya collection today and it's gonna be a long one because I gathered them all here and it's nuts. It's so bare behind me because I took down all my Hoyas and I realized I have a million. So I'm gonna go through them and show you guys my favorites along with just everything that I have. Okay, so I went through and I counted and I have 26 pots of Hoya. Um, a couple are duplicates, so I don't have 26 dif different varieties, but um, I would say mine are all on the larger side, so I feel like they take up a lot of room. I know there are a ton of people that have a lot more different kinds of Hoyas than I do, <laughs> um, but I love the ones that I have and I'm really excited about them. So I'm just gonna get into it because it's gonna be long anyway, so let's just get going. Um, this first one is one of the newer ones to me. This is a Hoya Hushiklana, Hushikliana, something like that. I'm not gonna get very many names right. I'm gonna try my best, but I'll put them on the screen for you, of course. Um, and this one is so pretty. It's such a nice full pot and I love it. I think it's probably one of my new favorites. It kind of reminds me of the Australis Lisa, but even prettier. But it has that bright pink, um, new growth which is just really pretty and then it gets really really variegated leaves down towards here where you see that they just have a very thin green line around the edge which i think is really neat so love this one very very pretty and i'm gonna have to try and keep these separate after i've talked about them because i don't want to <laughs> talk about them again um the next one i have is the fungi Fungi, I'm not really sure how you pronounce it exactly. Um, this one has really nice splashing already and plenty of new growth. This one is newer to me as well. Really, really neat. I love this one too. I love them all. That's part of the problem of why I have so many. I just love all of them. Next, let's go with the Sunrise. So I have two of these. This one is a bigger plant. Um, but it's not as sun stressed yet. I did when I received it, it didn't have any sun stressing yet. And I put it right in front of my south facing window. And in just a few days, it already has this stressing here. Then here's a smaller pot of it, the version of what it can be when it gets really stressed. And this is so pretty. I love the red. It makes such a cool pop of color in the rest of the green of my um, room. So I'm really excited to get this one to be that stressed. I think it will be even more amazing once it's bright red. So love both of those. Let's see what else, let's go with the compactas. So I have this variegated compacta and this one is not trailing quite yet, but it's on its way to, it has a lot of new growth right in here. Hopefully you guys can see that too. Um, lots of new growth. It was shipped to me, so of course there's gonna be a little, I always find that some plants are stunted just a little bit when they've been shipped to you because of the stress, um, but I'm happy to see the new growth on this one coming through. So high hopes for this one. I'm probably gonna try and get it outside this summer if I can. Um, Non-variegated compacta good decent size like a medium size it's trailing it has put on a lot of new growth since I got it um at least like from here to here um in just a few months I'd say so that's exciting this one's really starting to trail but then I have my giant 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 one which if you guys follow me over on Instagram you will have seen my posts about this recently if you don't follow me on Instagram, head over there and do it. House plus plant. Um, I talk so much more about all of my plants over there. So look at that huge thing. Isn't that so cool? It's so big. I love it. It's nice and full on top. Lots of new growth. Lots of peduncles because it's such a mature plant. Let me see if I can find one for you. So there's one right here see if I can show it on camera. I don't know. Um, where did it go? Right up here. See that right there? So there's a peduncle. So hopefully it will bloom. 
Um, a lot of times, again, this one was shipped too. So when they get shipped, sometimes the, the blooms will blast. So they just won't um, bloom, but they will again eventually. So it's exciting that that one has so many peduncles. I'm, I hope it blooms. I think the flowers on the compactas are so pretty. This is Hoya Crinkle 8, another nice big one. Very happy. I have all of these Hoyas either in a west window or a south window. Um, Hoyas love a ton of light. I do have a couple under grow lights, which mimics about a west window as well. So they're all getting a lot of light and they all seem to be very happy. So again, this Crinkle 8. I love this one as well. Very close relative of the Compacta. They're both Carnosas. Um, so love those. This one has been one of my favorites for a long time. This is a Hoya Chelsea. And I just love the shape of these leaves. They're like little hearts. Again, they look a lot like the crinkle, but they're even more of a heart shape. And I just think they're such a gorgeous deep green color. They're even darker than the crinkle and the compacta. I'll show you side by side. I don't know if you guys can tell. <laughs> Maybe they look the same to you, but the mature leaves on the Chelsea are darker than the crinkle and I love this. I just love the shape. It looks so pretty when it's just sitting in its little corner and it makes me so happy every time I look at it. So that's another good one. One is a very interesting Hoya for me because it's the, one of the only ones in my collection that doesn't have nice thick leaves. Um, this is the Multiflora, also the Shooting Star or something like that. The blooms are a really unique shape. Um, this one, I think it's cool. I need to see it. I feel like this one is much more grown for its blooms, which a lot of Hoyas are, but I think the foliage of most Hoyas is really beautiful. This one, on the other hand, doesn't really speak to me, but I think the blooms will make up for it. So I'm just waiting on those to come. I do have some starting right here. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. So those are going to be starting soon. Um, so... I was actually happy to see these coming back because the blooms did blast on this one. There were some just about ready to open, but then they fell off, um, but they're coming back. So that makes me happy. I'll get to this one before I skip over it. So this is my Hoya Carii. This is the one that has the really nice heart shaped leaves, has a little bit of splashing, has plenty of new growth coming. And I have it just on this metal embroidery hoop trellis that ahead and show you the variegated one I have. This is the outer variegated one, Hoya Carii. Really, really pretty again. Heart-shaped leaves. They also have one that has white in the center instead of on the edges, um, which I think is really neat as well. But this is the one that I have and I love it. Next, one of my favorites and it's making me so excited because there are a couple little baby peduncles coming on this too. This is a Hoya Polynera fishtail or the mermaid, whatever, um, Hoya, whoops, because of the way the leaves look like a fishtail or a mermaid's tail. Really, really unique. Again, this one is another one of my prized Hoyas. This is the Matilde or Matilde. I don't know how you want to say it. I don't know what the proper way is. I just call it the Matilde because I like to. <laughs> I think it's cuter, a cuter name. And I haven't had it bloom for me yet because when I got it, the peduncles or the flowers were done and spent and it hasn't rebloomed, but I think it's on its way to doing that and I cannot wait to see them. See them. Um, it's very, very thick, has a ton of vines going everywhere. It's extremely happy. This one sits in a south window and I wanted to get some more of that splash like this, which is why I have it in such bright light, but I also think that just helps it grow even faster. So plenty of new growth coming out of the bottom of the pot as well, all around. This is probably, oh, can I say it's my favorite? It's at least in my top three for favorite Hoyas, for sure. The cute little tiny leaves is just, I don't know. I feel like everyone that sees it loves it. So definitely one of my favorites. The Hoya Matilde. All right, the Linearis, this one. Got this basket. It's pretty full for Linearis. This one 
I don't know that it will ever look pretty on the top, but once it gets nice and full trailing down, I think they are stunning. Um, again, a very unique leafed Hoya. I don't have any others that are this type of leaf shape needle. I don't have any other plants that are this shape. So it's very unique to me and I love the fuzzy green leaves. They're very fuzzy. They remind me of like little beans or something, but it's just kind of like a curtain, very soft and flowy and kind of just softens up whatever space you have it hanging in. So this is, this is growing on me. It's getting up to be one of my favorites for sure. It's Toya Billetier. I'm not sure how you say that one either. Um, love that the new growth is getting sun stressed and the brighter light you have it in, the more sun stressed it will get with gets that nice little purple new growth like that. So this is my Hoya Crimson Queen. This one has never bloomed for me yet, um, but I am hopeful that very soon it will. I think I see a couple spots that could be starting to be peduncles, but I'm not sure. It's a queen because the white is on the edge versus the princess, which I'll talk about in a minute, has the white in the center. Let's move on to the Crimson Princess. And like I said, the Crimson Princess, you can tell that it's the princess because the white is in the center of the leaf instead of the edge. This one <laughs> has gone a little crazy and is also really big now. Australis Lisa, another great one that gets the nice pink new growth under high light situations. Um, very, very pretty variegation again with the yellows, the greens, the pinks. And these get nice big leaves eventually. This is still very much a baby plant, um, even though it has grown a lot since I got it, but it's still very juvenile and it will get nice, big, solid, thicker leaves as it gets older. This is my pubicalyx and I have it on this little bendable pole, which is kind of fun. Um, and this one, it's kind of wobbly, um, is really neat. It has grown so much as well, just in the past couple months. And all of this darker, all these darker leaves are new growth and they're so sun stressed. So they're that really cool dark color, which I love when they do that. Pubicalyx, and then this is the pubicalyx splash. So you can see the difference. This one has much splashier leaves more than the regular one, um, even though they're in the same lighting conditions. So if you're ever searching for one and you want the splash, make sure it's very splashy like these leaves versus the regular pubicalyx that just has some splashiness because there is a difference. And that one's really fun too. This one's going kind of wild. I gotta get it on a trellis of some kind, I think. This one is another new one to me, Hoya Bella, which I know also has really cute little flowers, really sweet little arrow-shaped leaves. I like this one too. They're so pretty when they're trailing down over a pot as well. So I can't wait till it gets to that point. Um, this one does not have any peduncles yet. It seems pretty young to me too. So hopefully soon, maybe after this summer, it will start blooming. I don't know. We'll see. Obovada, which is also extremely sun stressed and a little just stressed in general because I have not watered it in a little bit and so the leaves are pretty pale um, but you can see where the sun has really been shining in the window these leaves are much darker um, and then all the new growth is very dark as well like on this branch this is another one of my favorites just because the leaves are so big and round it reminds me a lot of the carry eye it's just not um, it just doesn't have the nice heart-shaped leaves. They're just nice and round, which is still fun. Um, but yes, love this one too. This was one of the first larger Hoyas I purchased and it definitely has a soft spot in my heart. So I need to take better care of it. I need to work on this a little bit, give it a good soak. Yeah, Macrophylla variegata. These are so neat because these leaves are just huge. So here's it compared to my hand. I love these. This was another one of the first ones in my collection and I bought it as like a four leaf, like two plants that had two leaves each and I potted them together in this pot and had one go up the trellis each way. And it is now this nice 
big pot. But if you turn it this way, <laughs> you can see that it has been turning to face the sun. It faces a south window as well. And this one is very happy there. It has a lot of new growth as well. It has get, gotten all of these little crystal droplets and it has had them for a long time. Um, no pests on it that I can tell. Um, if any of you guys know what that might be or have any ideas, comment below so that I can look into it. I've tried researching it and I can't figure it out. And I just realized there's a peduncle right here. Do you guys see that right there? That is really exciting. I did not think this one was going to bloom anytime soon. So that's really cool. I think it's a peduncle anyway. Has to be, right? Yeah, it is for sure. It is for sure. That's so exciting. I just realized that. I feel like that is a new development. So love that plant. Love it even more now that it might bloom for me. Um, what else? I think I'm to my last one, which is, oh, nope, I have one more. I'm going to do this one and then I'll do my last one that I'm excited to talk to you about. So this is the Curtisii. Again, so sweet, so cute. Reminds me of the Matilde in that it has the smaller, rounder leaves. And this one had a little bit of a rough start. It lost a lot of the bottom um, leaves after shipping, but it has started to come back to life. And it is very happy. Lots of new growth up here and the new growth is darker too. I've been trying to sun stress this one as well because they get the really splashy leaves like that when they're sun stressed. And I love that so much. The splashiness is what I look for the most in Hoyas. I love, love, love splashy leaves. So, Curtisii, another great one, little, cute, sweet one that I love. And then, last but definitely not least, I think, make sure I got to everybody else, yes, is my Hoya Lacunosa. This plant is probably the most underrated Hoya that I know of. I, nobody talks about this one, really, and it is just such a rewarding plant, especially if you're new to Hoyas, just buy this one first. It's so forgiving. You can let it dry out for weeks and it's fine. You can soak it and it'll probably be fine. Um, but it just blooms nonstop for me. And you can see all the blooms on this plant. Like there's just so many and they smell really good. Some Hoya flowers stink really bad. Um, but these smell delicious. They are like a floor, sweet florally. And if you've ever smelled the, um, flowers of like a string of pearls or something, it reminds me a lot of that scent, like kind of like cinnamon floral, just so good. And it just keeps going. I cannot like there ever since I got it, it started blooming right away and it has not stopped. Look at all those flowers. And something that I love about this one is how dark, like look at this stem, look how dark those leaves are. Very purple, burgundy with tons of splash. I believe this is the Lacunosa Snowcaps. I might, so I've been trying to research this. I, it might be a more rare version of the Hoya Lacunosa. I'm not sure though. So again, if you know, or if you think you know which one this is for sure, comment below and let me know. because. I've been trying to figure out the darker leaves. I don't know that it's sun stress um, or if it's just meant to be that way. And it's a different variety that I'm, and I'm just calling it the snow caps one and I'm wrong, but there's so much of that new growth that is very, very dark purple, which I think is very cool. And I feel like my camera just can't even pick up on the color. It's so unique. Like this one right here, so purple. This one, I recommend Hoya Lacunosa to every single person I talk to that's like, I want a Hoya. I'm like, just get a Lacunosa. They're the best. And oh, they just smell so good. I love it. They smell even stronger at night. And so when I'm sitting in this room at night and um, just doing whatever, I can smell it from across the room. It just smells up this whole place and it's so pretty. You guys see all those blooms. I could talk about this one forever. Those are all of my Hoyas that I have for now. I'm sure I'll be getting more eventually. Um, they're so rewarding. I, Hoyas probably, besides just like the trailing string of plants, Hoyas are definitely one of my favorite varieties of plant to own. And a lot of them do trail, so it kind of checks both those boxes. But 
I know that was a lot. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing everything that I have. Make sure you follow over on Instagram. Follow, subscribe, follow here. Comment your favorite Hoya so I can look into it if I don't already have it. Thanks for watching, guys.